Now last year's Pixel 7a was proper lush, because it was basically a placky Pixel 7 flagship phone, but quite a lot cheaper. And cheaper means more booze money, and more booze money makes Uncle Spurt a very happy and very spurty human person. So it's with much glee and many a preemptive spurt that I've been following the development of Google's fresh Pixel 8a, which should hopefully once again offer that prime Pixel experience at a price that won't completely knacker your savings. And unfortunately, the only price leak that we've had so far on the Pixel 8a from a European retailer suggests that cost may have had quite a considerable hike over the previous generation. We're talking 570 euros here, which is, uh, yeah... After all, the Pixel 7a cost from 449 British pund or 499 euros when it went on sale just a few months back. And that was already a price hike over the previous Pixel A blower. So I'm going to be cautiously optimistic and say this leak is likely a whole load of grade A testicular matter and Google will try and keep that price under 500 quid. And as my tech predictions normally have a sky high accuracy rate, you can basically take that as gospel. Maybe I'll just insert some clips here of past predictions I've made that have been huge successes. So what do we actually know about the Pixel 8 here so far from leaks and other internet chatter? Well here's a show where I basically regurgitate some of the stuff what I read online during the 5 minutes of half assed research that I hastily performed before switching on the camera. Jingle me. Techspert Weekly! So first up, just like the Pixel 7a, this latest affordable Google phone should be a palm-pleasing 6.1 incher, this time with curves in all the right places. The Pixel 7a was a bit boxy, but spoilery renders show that the Pixel 8a will be a more rounded entity, with hand-friendly curved corners. And while there's lots of online chat about Google possibly scrapping that full-width camera bar for the next round of Pixel flagships, it certainly seems like they're sticking with that instantly recognisable silver strip for the Pixel 8a. And like the 7a, it should only stick ever so slightly out of that arse end if these renders aren't a festering cauldron of floppy organs. Expect the frame and the back to be full on plastic again to cut costs, while leaks reveal a choice of four colours for the Pixel 8a, obsidian, beer, mint and porcelain. Or in normal human speak, you've got black, blue, light green, and a kind of dirty milky white that's not too far off a dollop of man fat. I mean, honestly, I wonder why they called it porcelain and didn't just go with man fat or spooge. I mean, if nothing else, it'd certainly cause a few double takes as people spot the poster as they're wandering by Carphone Warehouse. As for that mint colour, well, this was introduced on the Pixel 8 and the Pixel 8 Pro earlier this year, and I really like it, so I'm really happy to hear that it's coming to the Pixel 8 here as well. It just reminds me of happy summer times as a sprog when I'd get a mint choc chip ice cream and Whitley beer, and then I'd see how many licks I could have before I got attacked by a massive angry seagull or some pikey with a switchblade. Ah, great days. Oh, and the Pixel 8a should once again, like the Pixel 7a, be at the very least IP67 water and dust resistant. Quite handy if you happen to be in Whitley Bay and you're getting pecked or stabbed to bits and bleeding all over the joint. And as usual, this wallet-friendly Pixel should sport the same brains as the previous flagship pair, namely Google's Tensor G3, likely backed here by 8 gigs of RAM. In terms of sheer beefiness, well, let's just say that the G3 isn't exactly a fine fillet steak. It's more like a spam sandwich, albeit a really nice fresh bit of spam with a neat pile of pickled onion monster munch stacked on the side. You can expect the Pixel 8a to play stuff like Genshin Impact without absolutely breaking, although if you max out the graphic settings then you can expect to see the occasional stumble and splutter. The main advantage of that Tensor chipset is of course all of the lovely AI shenanigans that you'll be able to enjoy in the Pixel 8a, huzzah. Stuff like recording transcriptions and summarization and circle the search and Christ I'm boring the tits of myself now. Basically you can expect everything found on those pricey flagships minus the Pixel 8 Pro exclusive stuff like video boost. And don't expect the Pixel 8 here to come with a built in thermometer. So no you won't be able to check the precise temperature of your cat when you're bored shitless. Because one of the biggest advantages of the Pixel 8a is that it should come with seven years of guaranteed OS and security updates like the rest of the Pixel family in recent times. And that can't be bettered by any other mid-range phones. It's a huge boon if you want to hang on to your mobile for the foreseeable. No word so far on the Pixel 8a's camera tech, but the hardware should be your usual wide and ultra-wide combo 
We could get the same 64 meg quad PD snapper from the 7A, or maybe Google will slap on the 50 meg Octa PD effort from the Pixel 8. But either way, you can expect sploosh worthy shots as always, boosted by Google's nipple flickingly good image processing. And as for the rest of the Pixel 8a specs, well, no real surprises. As with the Pixel 8, you can again expect an OLED display with Full HD resolution and 90Hz refresh, plus that central selfie cam orifice. The battery will likely be around the 4400mAh capacity again, and that should give you a full day of prosing, poking and swiping, although don't be surprised if it's sphincter squelchingly close to death at the end of longer days. And there should be wireless charging support yet again, which will prove only marginally slower than sticking a cable in its arse. Because face it, this thing ain't gonna charge fast. But anyway, all should be revealed at that spangly Google I.O. event kicking off in May. But until then, what do you reckon? Are your pants moist with anticipation or depressingly dry with doubt? Let us know by working your fingers all over your chosen device down in the comments section below. And now it's time for the part of the show that always means maximum moisture, it's viewer comments. Viewer comments. <laughs> So we'll start this week with Ian's Ventures 2012, Yurit, who says, Not to sound too weird, but I use the exact same glass for drinking whiskey. Yeah, I think I may have got that as a Christmas present, potentially, maybe like bundled with a small selection of whiskies or something. I mean, basically, my extended family all know far too well that I'm a raging alcoholic, but, you know, instead of holding an intervention and get me the help I so very clearly need, they instead just lean really heavily into it and buy me crates of booze every birthday and holiday season. They've probably at some point experienced me sober and been like, you know what, we prefer them absolutely soused to the tits. Rick Guzman says, I promise not to flog the bishop to this video. I mean, a man's got to do what a man's got to do, right? I uh, had a few comments, uh, Connor Bryant, Daryl Milton, etc., who asked what was the watch I was wearing in the previous episode. And that would be the very spangly and very yellow Xiaomi Watch S3. And if you fancy one, my full review actually went live just earlier this week. I think it was Wednesday. And let me tell you, that bad boy is 15 hot minutes of raunchy wrist-based action, which may or may not make your taint absolutely sizzle with delight. I'm sorry, that was absolutely overselling it. It's okay. It's not terrible. Uh, next up, No Galudi says, Can you show us your figure collection? I'm assuming you mean these dudes back here. And it's mostly just random stuff that I've been sent by brands. So I've got this wee Isus robot bloke who basically falls over every time I so much as breathe on this table. One of my cats absolutely loves more than him and then chasing around his wee spray paint can thing, usually while I'm shooting a bloody video of course. What? What are you doing mate? Now this one here I believe is supposed to be Mora, the red magic assistant who is just as completely useless as Siri, but also significantly more trouser rousing. You can check out my red magic videos for more on her anyway. Uh, no touching, no touching. She really should get on HR department if she's having to say stuff like that. Are you a commander? Well, I certainly am now. And honestly, I can't even bloody remember who the weird bunny hat person is. This one here is the only one I've actually bought myself. Good old chainsaw man. One of my favourite mangas and animes of recent times, although poor old Chainsaw Man has proven quite popular with the cat again, so he's absolutely chewed his saw blade to bits. The poor bugger's finally met his match there. Next up, Cedric Cottage says, Just realised I haven't commented on here in a while. I'm still here watching religiously every textbook weekly. Just don't have anything smart to say. But then aren't mean in this comments what the comment section is for. Abs are friggin' lootly, buddy. You certainly nailed that brief. Now, the subject of last week's show was, of course, Samsung's infamous ring, which they teased quite a lot at MWC, but apparently we won't get another good glimpse of it until towards the end of the year. The Bismarck says, Finally, a ring to signify my marriage to the Samsung ecosystem and random health stats that I do nothing with. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've been reviewing smartwatches for a decade now, sometimes two smartwatches at a time as well, so, you know, probably a massive a virtual mountain of data. I haven't once used it to, you know, try and improve my lifestyle or anything like that. I mean, if I was to compare my health data from back in my early 30s to now, I'm not sure there'd be much of a difference anyway, as I was a permanently sloshed slab of upright lord back then as well. Uh, Chris says, got myself a Rincon smart ring recently, really liking it. I only really use the smart functionality for sleep tracking, 
I have a few different sleep issues and some of the data has actually been pretty helpful for mitigating these. Well, it's great to hear that it is actually useful uh, for some people because certainly from my perspective, I've tested out bloody dozens and dozens of these things. The sleep tracking always coughs up the same genius advice. Why not try going to bed sooner and stop guzzling so much booze, you massive pisshead? Well, gee, Mr. Smart Tech f***ing know-it-all thing. Yeah, I'd probably do that if I didn't have tons of tech to review and I wasn't a raging alcoholic. Jason Shalcross says, You missed off the one thing about the ring that I actually care about, contactless payments. I love paying for stuff with my phone versus a card, but a ring would be so much easier. I can use my watch, but that means I'm locking it every time I put it on, which is tedious as f***. So as far as the contactless payment situation goes, Samsung's been pretty cagey around that subject with the Samsung Galaxy Ring. They've sitting there looking into other features outside of the sleep and the health tracking, but not really committed to anything. I know just from doing some research that the McClear Ring can do contactless payments, but I haven't actually tested out, so I'm not really sure how the security side of thing works out. I mean, what happens if somebody manages to slip the ring off and then just goes on a spending spree? I guess you can, of course, remotely deactivate it using the app or whatever when you realise that it's gone. But anyway, we're veering dangerously into normal, sensible tech-based chat, so let's move swiftly on. Fizza Games says, What even is this thing? Are you referring to the Samsung Ring or my face or what? Mark M 1630 says, waiting for that title to change. Yeah, gotta say, I am quite surprised that I somehow managed to slip that one by the YouTube fun police. And I'm just rechecking, but last time, yeah, the monetization is still active for that video as well. Which, you know, given some of the stuff that I've been demonetized for in the past couple of years, I really did not expect that. Just a wee bit of friendly heads up advice for anyone thinking of starting up a YouTube channel. Definitely, whatever you do, do not make a joke about fisting your granddad in the first sort of five to ten seconds because the video cops really do not like that. Pugwash says, the master of the single entendre. Well done, sir. Oh, uh, well, thank you. MLX07 says, I watched this guy just to hear his language. Over the months, I just realized I was starting to pick up some of his phrases, especially shenanigans. I mean, compared with some of the verbal discharge that pours out of my mouth, I guess at least that's one of the least awful. The Pyman says, On the subject of pronunciation, I watch all your videos twice. Oh, thank you. On the second view, and I turn off the volume. I think most people turn off the volume on the first view, and to be honest. And I turn on the subtitles. They are hilarious. They mangle the English language even more than you do. You know, I haven't checked out the automatic subtitles in quite some time. I know they used to be piss poor. Let's uh, let's have a little go to a couple of the recent videos. Well, that's not quite as bad as I thought it would be, although for some reason the subtitle bot can't understand me whenever I say phones, which obviously I say quite a bloody lot. It seems to understand all the important stuff though, bollocks, bugger, etc. Now, Will Rivera says, would you do a Things I Saw at MWC video? I kind of already did a super brief roundup in the viewer comment section of, I believe it was Textbook Weekly 189. But honestly, at this MWC, I spent more time probably staring at the insides of my hotel room toilet bowl than I did at shiny, interesting tech at the conference. Well, I already covered that in 189, so I won't regurgitate now, so to speak. I'm running out of time as well, so last couple of comments. Um, Bergball says, Whenever I watch Techspert, I feel like I'm too young to be watching an old guy talking about being drunk 24-7, while also being too old to watch someone making toilet jokes. I mean, I think you've hit it on the head there. My problem is that I basically cater to zero tastes. My entire demographic is a single, middle-aged, emotionally stunted, alcoholic dude who loves knob gags and also affordable Chinese phones. And he probably lives in Milton Keynes, the poor sod, so he's got nothing better to do than watch shit like this on YouTube all day. Uh, Mythic Sons says, At this point, it feels like someone is paying you to say bad things about James Corden. Jesus Christ, that would be the best job ever. Don't get me wrong, I don't like him much either, but you make him sound like he shat on your doorstep and smashed your front window. Yeah, you know what, Mythic Sons, mate, you are absolutely 100% correct. My James Corden vendetta has been going on for far too long. I can't even remember why it all started, to be honest, other than the obvious f***ing reasons. But anyway, yes, it is time to start hating on another absolute talent void. There's certainly plenty of options out there, like sort of Michael McIntyre, maybe a bit of Anton Deck, two for one special there. If you guys have got any suggestions on who should bear the brunt of my wrath, well, definitely let us know 
in the comments down below. And if you've got anything else you want to share with the group, well, definitely again, smash that down in there. We'll get away through as much of that as possible next week. And speak of the next week. Next week, next week, what the f is next week? Well, next week looks like a cracker. I've got the f***ing dentist on Monday. Can't wait to be orally assaulted and answer the same pointless questions as always. I'm not sure if your dentists are like this as well, but every time it's like, oh, do you drink a lot of coffee? All right, that'll probably explain why your teeth are browner than a grizzly bear's chocolate starfish. And is it normal for a dentist to ask how many units of alcohol you consume on the average week? Like, what business is it of theirs? Like, as, as if it's not bad enough, I'm guilted every time I go for a sodden medical. Now I've got my f***ing hygienist silently judging me. So anyway, yeah, that and also tech stuff. Including, I'm hoping to do a video on this bad boy here, which arrived early this week. Xiaomi 14 Ultra, baby! And also another big review, uh, which I've been working on for a while now. Really should have reviewed it by now, but uh, at the time I was properly testing it out. It was still a work in progress, still didn't have all of the features that had been teased. So anyway, that review hopefully coming next week as well. In the meantime, have yourselves a bloody wonderful weekend. Massive thank you for watching this whole sack of crap. And please do, poke subscribe, ding that notifications bell if you've made it this far. You reckon you could actually sit through another one. So yeah, have yourselves a wonderful weekend. Cheers, everybody. Love you.